In this video, we're going to go over the different properties of a wave. Um, so you can see right now I have wavelength, the distance between two points, uh, the amplitude, the max distance the wave moves from its rest position, and the frequency, the number of times a wave passes a point each second. Um, and we're going to use the wave that I have drawn here um, to go over those different properties. Um, so the wavelength, the distance between two equivalent points on a wave. So I can pick any point and then I can say, um, what's the next time I see that point on the next wave? Um, so um, let's, crests are pretty easy to track. So I'm going to say, um, let's start with this point right here. Um, and if I follow my wave down um, and back up, the next time I get to a crest is right here. Um, and so that's going to be um, one wavelength. So uh, the distance um, to my next crest. So I'm going to um, write out that right there. So from one crest to the next crest, that's my wavelength. Um, and I'm going to use the Greek letter lambda to represent that, lambda. Uh, it kind of looks like an upside down Y with a, a little um, piece on the end there. Now, um, I could pick any other two points, too. I could pick two crests, and that would be a wavelength. Um, I can pick any two points. That's my wavelength. Um, on this wave, in order to know our wavelength, we kind of have to designate um, some sort of scale. So if I say uh, each box, both vertically and horizontally, represents one centimeter, well, now I can count the boxes from, from one to another, um, and I'm going to get four boxes there. So uh, we'll say the wavelength is four centimeters. Okay. Um, now, I can pick any two points, and it should be the same number there, the same number four centimeters. Um, I can pick two... Um, to troughs, and that distance is going to be four centimeters. Um, I can pick a random point in the middle of the wave right here and measure it to the next time I get to that point. So if I uh, track that, I'm going to get to it again right there, right here. Um, that is also going to be four centimeters. Um, any two equivalent points gives me one wavelength, and it should be the same. Okay. Now the amplitude is the max distance a wave moves from the rest position. Uh, so I have uh, a gray line drawn in the middle of my wave there. Um, I'm going to call that the resting position. It's just halfway between my crests and my troughs. And so the amplitude is the max distance from that middle position. Um, so our max distance uh, is going to be our crests and our trough. Uh, so if I measure from up here, crest to that, that is one amplitude right here. Um, the distance from that mid position to a crest um, and that mid position to a trough. Both of those numbers should be exactly the same. Um, I should get the same for my amplitude. Here my amplitude is three boxes if I count from the rest position to a crest or a trough. Um, so we'll say three centimeters is the amplitude of this wave. And then finally, our frequency is the number of time a wave passes a point each second. So this is going to depend um, on what we designate this wave that we see here. Um, what amount of time does that represent? Because we're not seeing this wave moving, and waves really do move. So um, we have to decide what does this represent. So I'm just going to say what I see here visibly it represents one second. So from the time here from this uh, point at the beginning um, and to, to the end point right here. Um, that represents one second. So this is zero seconds, um, and this at the end is one second. Um, so how many waves do I see past um, that point? So I can count up my waves that I see there. Um, I have one wave a crest and a trough, two waves, a crest and a trough, three rate waves, a crest and a trough, and then four waves, a crest and a trough. We have a total of four waves. I see four waves in that one second. Okay. 
Um, another way you can count them is to count up your crests and your troughs individually and then just divide by two. I know students find that easier sometimes. So I could say there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total crests and troughs. And so that translates into four um, total waves, just dividing by two. Sometimes that counting can be a little bit easier for students. Um, so my frequency is four waves every second. And the way I'm going to write that is by writing a four um, and then using the specific unit that we have for when we're counting up certain things per second. Um, and so we use the unit Hertz for that, HZ, capital H, lowercase z, named for a guy named Hertz. Okay, so those are our four basic properties that we have. From this, we can actually calculate our wave speed. Um, so how fast a wave moves through space is it's the wave speed. Um, and I, I need a few of those characteristics that I just measured. Um, the formula for wave speed uh, is V, is our symbol for wave speed. Um, and then two symbols we just saw above, lambda and F. Uh, so our wave speed equals lambda, which is our wavelength, times f, which is our frequency. Wave speed equals wavelength times frequency. I'm going to go ahead and outline those symbols and variables, just as I said there. Lambda frequency, so uh, we have wave speed, so V like velocity, wavelength, and frequency. The units um, are going to be pretty standard for wavelength. Wavelength is a length, and so we're going to get units like centimeters, what we saw before. Um, you're going to get units like meters, uh, even things like feet, English units. Any unit of length could be a unit for our, our wavelength. Um, like I said, frequency is in hertz, uh, which we say is hz. And hertz means one over seconds, one over seconds. Um, which uh, is going to come back in in a second. And then our wave speed, uh, because we have a wavelength and we're multiplying it by hertz, which means one over seconds, we get um, a standard distance uh, or standard unit of speed. So things like centimeters per second um, or meters per second or feet per second. Um, some unit of length over seconds. Okay, so we can calculate the wave speed of the, the wave that we just measured, uh, the characteristics of above, its properties. We'll take and we'll rewrite our wave speed because that's always a good uh, practice to write the, the formula that you're using. So uh, V equals lambda times F, wave speed equals wavelength times frequency. My wavelength we measured to be four centimeters. Wavelength was four centimeters, so we'll write that here. And that gets multiplied by our frequency, uh, which we said was four hertz. Frequency of four hertz. So I have centimeters times hertz, four times four, pretty easy math there. 16 is our number, four times four is 16. And then I have centimeters times Hertz, centimeters times one over seconds, centimeters per second. Okay, so you're gonna always get your, your top unit of your speed units gonna be whatever you had for wavelength, and then uh, that's gonna be over seconds. So that's our wave speed. Um, our last characteristic that we need to talk through um, is called the period of the wave. The period um, is the amount of time it takes one wave to pass a point. So we can think about how fast they're moving or how frequent waves are in really two different ways. We can think about it in our traditional frequency, and then we can think about it in the amount of time for one wave to pass. And that's called the period of the wave. It's the inverse of your frequency. 
So uh, the, we can calculate that period of a wave. We use a capital T to represent period. And it's simply the inverse of frequency. The inverse of something is one over that thing. Uh, so T equals one over F or period equals one over frequency. We just have one symbol to add there because we already added uh, frequency in our, our table above. Uh, the symbol capital T is for period of a wave. Um, and uh, because we take and we put one over one over seconds, one over one over seconds, one over hertz, um, actually gives us the unit seconds back. So one over one over seconds gives us seconds mathematically. We can calculate the period of that wave that we just drew above. Um, so one over one over one over F. Um, our frequency, again, just like in our last one, uh, was her four hertz. Our, our wave's frequency was four hertz. Uh, so we'll fill those numbers in. We have one over four hertz. Uh, and again, some pretty simple math. I don't think we need a calculator for this. One over four, one fourth gives us 0 0.25. Remember, we always want to convert to decimal in science class. So uh, 0.25, uh, and that gives us one over hertz, which I said before, gives us a unit of seconds. Uh, just to kind of show you that visually, I have one over one over seconds. And that's kind of like saying I'm taking one and I'm dividing it by one over seconds. If you remember that reciprocal rule from math class, you can cheat, keep the first thing, change the sign from division to multiplication, and then flip my other fraction. Now I have s over one instead of one over s. Again, that is gonna give me seconds, okay? So 0.25 seconds is my period. So that, those are just a few things that we can add up here. If we, we said that um, we have a wavelength of four centimeters and amplitude of three centimeters, our frequency is four hertz. We have a wave speed of 16 centimeters per second. And we have a wave period of 0.25 seconds. It would take a quarter of a second um, for one of those waves to pass any given point if it's moving. So just to recap, we talked about wavelength, the distance between two equivalent points, the amplitude, the max distance of a wave uh, that the wave moves from its rest position, the frequency, the number of times a wave passes a point each second, uh, the wave speed, how fast a wave moves through space, and period, the amount of time uh, it takes the amount of time it takes uh, to pass a point, uh, the inverse of the frequency. And those um, are our key wave properties.